Starbirth has been officially revealed. We know all the cards in it, and we're going to talk about some of them, but in a very specific context. Hey everybody, Nick from Nine Card TCG, and today we're going to be talking about the cards we're going to be getting in Brilliant Stars in February, and how that relates to specifically Single Strike. And why are we talking about Single Strike? Well, because uh, I, I want to, is basically the answer. So, let's take a, a trip over to Poker Beach because that website is one, phenomenal, and two, they have all the Starbirth cards, right? Starbirth is the Japanese set name, and um, they have all the cards and translations, so we can go ahead and take a look at the cards there. We are not doing a set review. I'm not looking at every single card. I'm looking at the ones that I think are going to be very important specifically for single strike. Uh, so now that I've said that, let's go over to Poker Beach. And if you haven't already, uh, maybe hit the subscribe button, bell notification, leave a like, a comment, tell me what you think about the Starbirth set. And are you released, are excited for the Brilliant Stars release in February? I know I am very excited. There's a lot of cool cards in here, but uh, yeah, let's get over to it. So Starbirth, they've been officially released. It releases in Japan next Friday, which according to my calendar would be the 14th of January. This is the pack art for Starbirth, if it ever wants to open. There we go. So there you go, Starbirth. Now, a lot of the cards in Brilliant Stars are expected to be a combination of cards from Starbirth and cards from the Star Deck 100 series. Now... We, I don't know exactly all the cards that are coming in Star Deck 100, but we know we're getting some. So here are some of the cool cards coming in Starbirth. We talked about Charizard V Star. We've talked a little bit about Shaman V Star. We're not going to get into it too much. It's not particularly important for uh, Single Strike. Leafeon V Star is a little bit important to keep in mind because Umbreon does have that grass weakness, but. Um, it's not in the set, it's coming as its own separate box promotion, like kind of like the Hoopa and Dragonite V boxes, so we're not going to talk about it in this video, but we can in the future. Um, Luminion here, Luminion is a card that when you play this from your hand to the bench, it lets you search your deck for a supporter and put it into your hand, very similar to the Tapu Lele GX that we saw not too long ago, so uh, it might not be used in single strike but i definitely think it's a card that single strike will see and given that it only has 170 hp can be a very good two price target to knock out with something like impact blow or umbreon's moonlight blade attack so not a bad like we don't really care about it too much for our deck but something that you will see easy prizes or easy two prizes in combination with that and crow about the games two-thirds over and now you just have to go and knock out one more v or v max which isn't really that hard to do with urshifu v max so luminion might be something interesting for us to keep our eyes on we also have this manaphy and i know this is all in japanese uh i can't read japanese these were translated by uh, individuals like justin basil and antoine boulet so thank them for the translations i just happen to remember what they do Manaphy is a basic Pokemon that has the Bench Barrier ability, which prevents damage to your Bench Pokemon from your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks. So, really this affects two decks, and that is Rapid Strike Urshifu and Jolteon. Both of those attacks, G-Max Rapid Flow and Max Thunder Rumble, hit the Bench. And so, this is going to stop them from doing that. It does not stop, and I can't stress this enough, it does not stop the quick shooting on the uh, chilling rain italian and it does not stop the double gunner ability from the italian v max why because those say well i, I don't remember the italian v max but the, the chilling rain quick shooting italian for sure says place two damage counters damage counters and damage from attacks are not the same thing so if this says prevent damage from attacks then anything that puts damage counters is still going to apply so you could still use quick shooting italian and i'm pretty sure the uh double gunner ability on the italian v max says place two damage counters on two of your opponent's pokemon so do keep that in mind but this will um rapper strike urshifu was a little bit favored for 
uh, it's it's favored against single strike. So having this bench barrier as a one of might not be a bad idea. It's also really good to have in the early game against Jolteon because the reason Jolteon wins is because they're able to pick apart your Hound Doors before you evolve them to Hound Dooms, and then you can't get any good ex energy acceleration. So if you can get this onto the bench really quickly using something like Battle VIP Pass, Level Ball, Great Ball, Quick Ball, whatever method of Pokemon Search you have. Now you get it onto the field, you protect your Hound Doors and Hound Dooms, and you kind of force your opponent to target this Manaphy, which it's, it gives you plenty of time to set up your board state. So something interesting that I think might see use as a one-of in uh, single strike decks. What else do we got? We talked about Raichu V already. Uh, this Dusknoir is kind of interesting it doesn't really help us too much but it does let you move any amount of special energies during your turn from one pokemon to another so if you pair this with something like uh dream ball and peonia and some some other crazy way of getting it out like some of the cheeses that people use to get stage two pokemon out uh you can theoretically just throw your special your, your single strike energies and capture energies out onto your pokemon however you want and then just move them around for free so you can start piling damage on one pokemon in single strike roar and then just move them over for free with the dust nor so that you're not damaging maybe the active pokemon you're damaging a bench pokemon and you don't have to worry about them really knocking out something super important so again do i think it's going to be played in single strike no but it's worth noting at the very least whimsicott v star is a little annoying now it's a little annoying but it's not super difficult to deal with the reason is because a couple of things first it has 250 health and it does not resist fighting so those two things are important to note what does it do well for a psychic and two colorless energies it does 160 damage and during your opponent's next turn they cannot play any tools or special energies from their hand now because single strike uses single strike roar most of the time we can just get the energies from our deck and attach it to our pokemon that way so it doesn't stop us from accelerating with houndoom but it does stop us from getting that third attachment that we need from the hand maybe a capture energy or something like that to get another basic pokemon onto the bench a little annoying uh capture energy is mostly useful in the early game so as long as they're not getting three energies uh and and the v star like turn two or turn three it's probably not that big of a deal the V-Star attack uh, does, it's for one energy, and it does 60 damage times the number of psychic energies attached to this Pokemon. So what decks does this go with? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is, of course, Shadow Rider, because that lets you accelerate energies to your bench Pokemon. And Shadow Rider does struggle against single strike because, well, Shadow Rider is weak to dark and Umbreon can one-shot it. So you're taking not only up trades and one-shots, but... Um, and I'm, I'm not too worried about this V-Star attack because all the energy has to be piled on to the Whimsicott, which means if they spread their energies out across their different Shadow Riders and Alcremie and Whimsicott, then Whimsicott doesn't do a ton of damage. And if they pile it all onto the Whimsicott and you knock it out, well, then Shadow Rider doesn't do a lot of damage because it does damage based on the energies attached to your Pokemon as well. But, so, so you know, there's a, it's kind of a give and take that this card has something like out creamy you don't have to pile the energy onto one card but you do have to discard all the energies that you want to attack with or the use for damage calculation so you don't have to discard the energies but you do have to pile it on and kind of hope that your uh your whimsicott is you know able to either close out a game which is probably when you would use this or, or not get bossed up as early so that you can get that game winning ko now why is a 250 health really important single strike urshifu v does native 180 and then with two single strike energies it's going to do 220 well we can easily get two single strike energies and that third energy attachment uh into play so we're hitting for 220 and we're going to come back and we'll talk about it a little bit more later but there's a, an item card it's a tool that does 30 more damage to your opponent's active v type pokemon so that 220 now becomes 250 and oh look whimsicon has 250 health it is the perfect number and we could one shot it with a v take two prizes and 
either stop them from taking a huge KO later in the game or just wipe out a lot of their energies and now their Shadow Riders are doing far less damage. Same with the El Creepy. It is weak to metal, um, so Duraludon, I guess, can handle it because Duraludon runs Zacian and Zacian Zamazenta can also handle us pretty easily as well, but uh, those decks will probably do fine against it anyway. So what else do we really have? I'm not going to talk about Whimsicott V because... You're probably not using it too much. You're probably just using the V-Star. It gives up the same number of prizes, and it has a really good attack, so why would you not use the V-Star? Haunch Crow could be a little annoying, uh, I guess, to play against, because the ability here lets you play up to four tool cards on this Haunch Crow, and it has 200 HP. Well, if you get crazy and attach four Cape of Toughness, or two Cape of Toughness and two... Uh, Big Charms, for example, now you have uh, a 260 to 400 addition, a 200, 160 to 200 extra health. So you're like a 360, 400 HP basic Pokemon. Again, that's a ton to ask for on a single prize Pokemon, but I mean, it's, it's possible. I don't remember exactly what the attack does. So let's just scroll down and kind of check it out. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of annoying because that's outside of the range in which Single Strike Urshifu VMAX can really hit. Urshifu VMAX is hitting for max 350 with all four Single Strike energies. Even if you have the tool card to do 30 more damage, you're still only hitting for 380. So you could be out of uh, KO range if they have four Cape of Toughness. Now, granted, you can only run four Cape of Toughness, so a single Tool Scrapper does put you back in KO range. And then there are... They don't have any more tools uh, to any more cape of toughness to really boost that HP. They're attacked over two dark and a colorless. Shadow Fear does 130 damage, and your opponent reveals their hand. It's okay. Uh, this doesn't have a V Star or a V Max or anything like that, so you're obviously going to be running this with things like cape of toughness, uh, spirit mask for energy disruption, rugged helmet to just tack on extra damage. Just like a bunch of different pretty good tools that just don't see use because there's no real spot for them and now you put on two rugged helmets and a spirit mask and a cape of toughness you are your opponent's taking 60 damage when they hit you you have 250 health so you're probably not getting one shot and they have to discard an energy or return it to the hand whatever spirit mask does so there's an energy disruption you're taking damage and you're probably not even taking a one shot it can be a little bit annoying. So running Tool Jammer is probably going to be the play as opposed to Tool Scrapper going forward. Uh, if that sees play, it might just be a mean thing. I have no idea. Uh, the Guard Chomp is pretty cool. It prevents all damage from its effects and attacks done to this Pokemon during your next turn. G-Max 1 Blow can ignore that and does ignore that. But do you really want a G-Max 1 Blow 160 HP single prize Pokemon? Probably not. So if you do see this, uh, it's it might be a little bit annoying. What else we got? This uh, Bibarel, right, is pretty interesting it's a stage one pokemon and you can get it out as early as stage uh, turn two as once on your turn you may draw until you have five cards in your hand which is a great consistency i just don't know where single strike would fit it in both in the deck list and on the bench so you're already pretty tight between your three hound dooms and a crobat and maybe a second attacker or three hound dooms and umbreon a second attack well, i guess umbreon could be your second attacker but you get the idea. And then maybe a bench barrier mana fee, and now you have to all of a sudden squeeze this B-Brawl in. It's something to consider and something that might be worth playing. This is where you can start getting crazy and maybe running Zoroark. And the reason I say Zoroark is because then you have the stage one B-Brawl, and then you have your Hound Dooms, and it's like, okay, well, if you need Hound Dooms, Zoroark could become Hound Doom, and if you need B-Brawl, then Zoroark could become B-Brawl. And you can start getting kind of crazy with some build ideas, and we'll see what ends up happening. We've talked about RCS V and V Star. It is weak to fighting, which means anything we do to it is going to get knocked out. There is a Dun Sparse that removes weakness uh, that removes uh, yeah, weakness from your colorless Pokemon. But I mean, you know, I don't think there's going to be like RCS V Star decks. They're probably going to be a one one or two two line to support other decks. So. We'll see. It could be its own thing. It has a high enough HP, especially when you combine it with the Bibro and this Tornadus. 
Now, this Tornadus is really interesting. It's a basic Pokemon. When you play it from your hand to the bench, you can have your opponent switch their active Pokemon with one of their bench Pokemon. Now, your opponent does get to choose, but it's still kind of annoying. It forces them to have a switch out. Maybe they only have one Pokemon on the bench. Maybe, uh, you know, they have to really make a decision like you're playing against Mew and what are they going to send up? Are they going to send up a Genesect? Are they going to send up a Mew? Like, that could be kind of problematic. So, a little interesting for that Tornado. So, maybe there is a possibility for Arceus to be its own deck and just be a completely colorless deck with Dunsparce and Tornadoes and Beebrel and... It could, it could, now that I'm thinking about it, it could be pretty good. Um, here's where stuff for Single Strike gets really interesting. Ultra Ball is a really interesting card for Single Strike because you do have to use, uh, you, have to, you have to discard two cards from your hand in order to play Ultra Ball. But if you do, you search your deck for any Pokemon you want. So you don't necessarily have to rely on finding the evolution incense, like, oh, I drew a quick ball and I can't get my Hound Doom with quick ball. Well, now if you draw an Ultra Ball, you can get it. If you draw an evolution incense, you can get the Hound Doom or the Urshifu V Max, whatever you need. But you do have to discard two cards. And unfortunately, you are sometimes resource tight in single strike. I lost against Duraldon in a tournament not too long ago or like the other day because. I couldn't manage my urns the way I really wanted to. I was forced into using my urns a little earlier. And by the end of the game, when I needed an urn the most, I didn't have any. And so if you're using Ultra Ball all the time to find Pokemon, and you're constantly discarding for Ultra Ball and Tower of Darkness, and you're damaging your... Like you you, you got to be really careful. Uh, so Ultra Ball might be a, a two of in Single Strike is kind of how I'm expecting it to go, but... Just know that your opponent can and might likely find the Pokemon they need a little bit easier. So you have to really map your prizes appropriately and expect their VMAX or their V-Star almost any turn. Because they could just Drizzile for an Ultra Ball and now just discard two cards and there you go. Now they have it. So a little bit annoying that, you know, you Drizzile and you get an Ultra Ball and then you play Melanie. Well, you attach an energy... And you get to draw three cards, which you can then use as quick uh, Ultra Ball fodder. It, it's a little, it's a little annoying, but yeah, that's that's kind of something to keep in mind. And the last thing that I think is pretty important for Single Strike, and it's probably the most important card to come out of the set for Single Strike specifically, and that is Choice Belt. Now, there are a few different tools that single strike uses and it could use the scroll of scorn it can use the uh, air balloon but choice belt is probably your best bet going forward why because you attach this tool to one of your pokemon and you do 30 more damage to your opponent's active v pokemon which includes v's v stars v maxes v unions if it has v in its name it's taking 30 more damage and why is this really important well if you do the math uh, most Pokemon V-Star that we've seen have on average 260 health. Well, Single Strike Urshifu does 180 naturally, plus 40 for two single strikes, is now doing 220. With the uh, with the Choice Belt, you're doing 250. So you're hitting the lower end of the spectrum of V-Stars. Well, if you have a third single strike energy, you're now hitting 270, which is at the higher end. The, the only Pokemon we've seen are Charizard and Arceus V-Star, which have 280 health. And those you will not be able to one-shot unless you have a fourth single strike energy. But hey, that's still... i rather use four single strike energies, an impact blow, uh, and hope I don't get knocked out the next turn. Or maybe I maybe I do V-Max and, v -Max and G Max one blow. And, you know, if I get knocked out and all the energies get discarded or I use G-Max 1 blow and all the energies get discarded anyway, the end result is the same. All my energies are in the discard pile. And now maybe I can use, instead of a fourth single strike energy, I just use capture energy because single strike uh, G-Max 1 blow does 270, which with any number of single strike energies will be enough to knock out any Pokemon V-Star we've seen. And it gives you the added bonus of being able to knock out pretty much any Pokemon V Max we've seen. Uh, yeah, 330 is the most 
a Pokemon VMAX will have that is not weak to fighting. A Turner just has 340, but it's weak to fighting, so you can knock it out with just an impact blow or even a beatdown if you have enough single strike energy. So, a lot to consider. Uh, and the reason why Choice Belt is so important is because Pokemon is clearly trying to move away from three prize formats. We've had it for two years now, and now they bring in V Stars, which are just two prizes. Even though they're evolutions of Pokemon V, they're still just two prizes. So the game's going to slow down a little, which means you can't just be G Maxing one, uh, G Max one blowing whenever you want, or to take these big knockouts because it's going to happen less. So single strike Urshifu V needs needs to be able to compete with these beefier two prize Pokemon, especially because you can't use Impact Blow two turns in a row. It used to be you just Impact Blow uh, a V, you evolve into a VMAX, you GMAX one blow their VMAX, now you got one prize left and you just have to handle that one remaining prize. And that's not that hard where you could just throw a couple energies onto your VMAX and beat down a Crobat for game. Okay, done, no problem. But now with V stars being two prizes, you probably still have to play a seven prize game. Uh, it's a little annoying. You will still have Umbreon to gust up maybe a single prizer, so you can just beat down that real quick before using your G-Max one blow. Uh, so like the ideal prize path, use your V, knock out a V, evolve into V-Max, gust up a single prize or something you can beat down with, and then G-Max one blow a V, V-Star, V-Max, whatever for game. So that's like the ideal plan, but it doesn't always go that way. Uh, pot helmet, this is going to, it can only be attached, attached to a card that does not have a rule box and it takes 30 less damage from your opponent's attacks. It's going to help with some single prize decks like the potentially Lucario deck. Um, I do think that GMAX one Bowl will go right through this, but again, you don't want to GMAX one Bowl a single prize Pokemon unless you absolutely have to. We got some supporters, um... None of them really help single strike. Professor's research being in the set means that its legality is increased for another two years. So that's really good for the deck. Boss's orders we kind of don't really care about because we have our own gusting system in the deck anyway. And then the last card is double turbo energy. Now double turbo energy is a really good card potentially. So this is an idea that I've had and you can run just a pure Umbreon deck, or you can run Umbreon like two single strike Urshifu Vs, and you run these double turbo energies, and they provide two, it has to be attached to a Pokemon, it provides two colorless energies, but the attacks of the Pokemon this is attached to do 20 less damage. Normally, that would be a problem, but not for single strike. Single strike has so many ways of boosting damage that it's not even funny between single strike energies and something like Karen's Conviction, you can get over this pretty quickly. Now, why is this good? Well, it's not good for Urshifu, right? Urshifu has two fighting and a colorless, so you don't really want to use this. But Umbreon has one dark and two colorless, which means you can just attach this and then single strike Roar to it. Oh, look, now it has 20 damage on, so Moonlight Blade goes from being 80 to 60, 160 damage. And you have single strike energy, which then gates the negative 20 you get from du double turbo, which means you're still doing 160 damage. And oh wait, Mew and Shadow Rider and Dragapult all have 320 health or less. And so your 160, when you hit for weakness, still does 320, which is the magic number to knock out a dark, weak, psychic type Pokemon. So... This might be a, a, a way to kind of counter Mew because you can do more. You can do the same thing faster. Now you don't need two Hound Dooms to accelerate energy and you're taking 40 damage in the process. And oh, look, Mel, when it can be a real problem now. Well, now I only have to do it once or maybe not even at all because turn one, I attach a single strike energy from the hand. Turn two, I attach a double turbo energy and now I'm still knocking out your V maxes. So I think that it, it, this does help Umbreon be its own deck. Right now it kind of struggles being its own thing because uh, Urshifu is kind of needed. But yeah, you play a 4 3 line of Umbreon and then two Urshifu Vs, and there you go. Then now you have your fighting type weakness covered because Impact Blow will knock out Jolteon and Eternatus and Gengar V max in one hit. And it's even if you don't have any additional single strike energies, because 180 times two is 
390 damage or whatever it is, 360. Uh, so you're doing enough damage where you don't need single strike energies, but obviously they are your primary energy source and energy acceleration method. So there you go. You pair Umbreon here with uh, double turbo energy, and then you also can use the choice belt, right? To still do an extra 30 damage, which you don't even really need. You can pair it with a different um, a different tool that might be a little more useful for your matchups, but uh, it, the the tool the the choice belt might be helpful in things that are not mu because now you're still you're doing 190 with one single strike and with two single strikes you're doing 210 which is enough to knock out a lot of v's but you're still going to be two shotting pretty much everything else which is a little bit annoying but it's okay because you can gust things up with the v max and beef up your health with v max uh and again karen's conviction for mid to late game or surprise knockouts can be a thing with single strike going forward so i think there's a lot of stuff going on with single strike that is really going to make this deck all uh, better than it is so we looked at the entire uh set of brilliant stars and how it relates to single strike and how it, it can either affect or improve single strike and honestly there's a lot going on i mean look how long this video has been going on way longer than i anticipated it too originally but that just goes to show how cool this set is and how much stuff there is to think about and talk about. And I'm very, very excited to try all these different single strike uh, methods and decks and, and ways of just improving the deck and helping it stay at the highest level that it possibly can. But that is going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to the individuals at Poke Beach and also everyone who helped translate these cards, get images up to the sites. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do any of this. So you're the real MVPs. And thank you to you for watching and, and hitting the subscribe button like I know you did and leaving a comment and liking because those things tell YouTube this is a good video and other people should watch it. We just hit over 800 subs and as soon as we hit 1,000, we got a really cool giveaway for you guys. So you don't want to miss that because we're giving away, and I think this is the first time I'm saying it, we're giving away some vintage first edition cards as well as some other uh, base set stuff. So we got some really cool things we're going to give away and I'm looking forward to doing it, but that's going to do it for us today. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.